So now that we know how to assign an oxidation state, we can use them to speed up our decisions about what's being oxidised and what's being reduced. And so what we're going to do is we're going to look at what's being oxidised and what's being reduced in terms of their oxidation states. And we get some new definitions. An oxidation is an increase in oxidation state. And if the number is reduced, then it is reduction. So if the number goes down, it's reduction. And if this number goes up, it's oxidation. So let's go back to our first example from the very first page of this pack. And let's work out the oxidation states of every single element present, please. So pause the video and work out the oxidation state. So the magnesium is zero because it's an element, as is the hydrogen at the far side. The hydrogens in the acid are plus one and the chloride ions are minus one. And just watch out in MgCl2 that you don't write minus two for the chlorine. Each chlorine is minus one. It's really important that you understand that although you are using it twice and so it counts as minus two for adding up purposes, each one is minus one. So whose number has gone up? Because remember, oxidation is when the number increases. Whose number has gone up? And we can see that Mg has been oxidised as its oxidation state. And again, if we want to write that out properly, we could say magnesium has been oxidised. That's the name of the element undergoing oxidation as its oxidation state has increased. And hydrogen, the atom hydrogen, is, a, is losing in terms of its oxidation state it's going down it's gaining electrons but it's being reduced because its oxidation state has decreased okay so have a go for each of these work out which species which is a word we use in chemistry when we don't want to say it's, it's definitely an element or it's definitely a compound or it's definitely an ion just means it could be any is being oxidized and which being reduced so you need to put in oxidation states now, I haven't put in all the numbers just to keep it tidy. You might have got in lots of different numbers. But what we can see is if we break it down to the ones that have changed, the iodide ions, the I minus, has gone up and increased. Iodine is being oxidised and sulphur is going down. Sulphur is being reduced. So iodine is being oxidised and the sulphur is being reduced. Now, it's not, not iodine the element, so don't use the formula. It's the element iodine, um, it's the iodine iodide ions in this HI that are being um, oxidised, and it's the sulphur in the sulphates. Let's do that in blue, because that's the color we use. It's the sulphur in the sulphates that is reduced. So we're just naming the symbol that is undergoing the change. So repeat that for the next two. So there we go. Okay, so if the number goes up, it's oxidised. If the number goes down, it's reduced. And this saves the time of converting these to ionic equations, splitting them up into half equations, and looking at the movement of the electrons. What we do know here is in the first one, the i's are going from minus 1 to 0, so they are um, increasing their oxidation number, but they're doing that by losing one electron. Now, the sulphurs are going from plus 6 down to minus 2. They're gaining 8 electrons. And that is actually why there are eight HI, so there are eight I's for every S, because every S wants to gain eight, but every I has only got one to lose. And so we have to balance that out. And then this is something that chemists will use to help them balance equations if they can spot it. So here in the second example, the Br minus one to zero, that's a change of one. The sulfur is changing by two, so we needed two Br's for every sulfur. And then the last one, um, each oxygen is going down to, each magnesium is going um, up to, and so there are the equal numbers of oxygens and magnesiums.